and it's activated charcoal. It's actually got activated charcoal in it. And this actually works, and let me explain why. Because... Activated charcoal comes in multiple different forms. Pills, powders, tablets, even hunting clothing. Does it work? And if so, what are some of the BS applications or just ridiculous applications that don't work with activated charcoal? And then what are some of the valid uses for your health with activated charcoal? Well, first of all, I want to show you, again, I'm having kind of some fun with this. I want to show you what happens when you do internet research and you look up activated charcoal. You find a lot of claims that say activated charcoal has this uh, negative charge so it pulls positively charged ions to it and it removes heavy metals like lead and mercury and other things that are positively charged. You see this with Josh Axe again, you see it with Dave Asprey who we'll talk about at the end of this video, and then you see it with this, for example, with this YouTube uh, uh, channel called Healthy Preparedness. Take a look. So these three substances are bentonite clay, diatomaceous earth, and activated charcoal. Um, so the similarities that these three have together is that all three of them are negatively charged substances, meaning that when taken internally or even used topically for infections, it has the ability to draw positively charged substances to itself. Those positively charged substances are things like viruses or bacteria, heavy metals, candida, parasites even. Um, they attract those things to them and when taken internally they are able to trap them inside themselves or on themselves and we're able to eliminate them from our body. So that's the YouTube channel Healthy Preparedness. Activated charcoal has a negative charge so it pulls out heavy metals like mercury, lead, things like that. And a lot of people are repeating that. It's not based on science, it's not true. But let's talk about what is true and, and, and let's start with this paper from 2017 in the Journal of the American Dental Association. It's called Charcoal and Charcoal-Based Dentrifices, a literature review. Dentrifices, that means toothpastes and powders that you scrub on your teeth. All right, and they said they looked at over 100 articles. So this is a review. And they say the reason they did this review is because internet advertisements included unsubstantiated therapeutic claims. Unsubstantiated, just total BS in other words such as antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and oral detoxification, as well as potentially misleading product assertions. Let's go on. The results of this review showed insufficient clinical and lab data to substantiate the safety and efficacy claims of charcoal and charcoal-based dentrifices. In other words, using charcoal in toothpaste is a waste of time. It doesn't work. In fact, it's probably harmful because it's abrasive, so you're probably rubbing off some enamel on your teeth. But why doesn't it work? Why isn't it antibacterial, antifungal, all of these kind of things? That's what people are saying it is. A lot of people say those things. But why? how does it work? It is good for some applications. Doctors use it if you overdose medicine. They pump it into your stomach and then pull it out. Okay, let's talk about the good uses. Got a paper here from 1980. We've known this for a long time. 1980, the Journal of Veterinary and Human Toxicology. This paper is called Activated Charcoal Adsorbs Aflatoxin B1. Aflatoxin, that's mold toxin. It adsorbs. That means it attracts the aflatoxin to it. They act in a similar chemical manner. So it's, it's called lipophilic in this case. Lipophilic meaning fat loving. So if you put oil and mix in another kind of oil or cholesterol or estrogen or testosterone, they all mix together. They're lipophilic. They love each other. That's literally what the Greek word means. That's what the scientific terminology says. But if you put water in there, those fats will float on top of water. Right? So adsorbs, they, they cling to each other. They cling to the other. This aflatoxin, this mold toxin clings to the surface of charcoal. So it, set, it starts by saying activated charcoal was demonstrated to adsorb aflatoxin in an efficient manner. And I probably shouldn't have thrown that paper because I was going to show you the structure of aflatoxin. It looks really similar to estrogen. And, you know, we talked about xerolinone, the mold estrogen, uh, a few episodes ago. And that one also looks really, really similar to estrogen. It tricks your body. But the point with aflatoxin is it doesn't have a lot of charge. It's a greasy molecule. It's, it's an oil-like molecule. That's why charcoal, activated charcoal, clings to it, 
right? I've used this stuff in actual scientific research papers. I've published peer-reviewed papers using activated charcoal to pull hormones, to pull fatty acids, to pull fats out of liquid, right? It works for that. It works awesome. So in other words, if you eat something moldy, like moldy grains, and you take an activated charcoal pill, yeah, it's going to grab onto the mold toxin, at least some of it that's in your intestine. And that's another, that's another just totally ridiculous idea that if you've got heavy metals in your blood or even mold toxins in your blood already, somehow taking activated charcoal in your intestine is going to remove those from your blood. It doesn't work that way. It gets it if it's in your stomach or if it's in your intestine. If the toxin is in your stomach or in your intestine, the charcoal can grab onto it. But again, it has to be a specific kind of char uh, uh, toxin. It has to be a greasy toxin, a hydrophobic toxin, a, 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 a toxin that's fatty, that's oily. Okay, and here's why. Because the structure of activated charcoal is just a bunch of carbons linked together in an efficient way, in a lattice, in kind of like a, just, just no charge, just a big framework of carbons. No charge, that's the key word here. That's why these things adsorb. And here's the electron microscope. So that's the chemical structure, but here's the electron microscope image. And then you can see huge gorges, valleys, you know, it looks basically like a sponge would look under a microscope. If you're looking at a sponge, that's what it looks like on a microscopic level. And here, I told you I was gonna end on Dave Asprey. So here's his website, Bulletproof, the Bulletproof website. And he's talking about, of course, just two grams of activated charcoal and he says, or use my upgraded coconut oil. He's always pitching his stuff. You know, every other sentence is promotional. I and mean, I don't have a problem with that. You have to promote your stuff or nobody's heard of it. But, I mean, he goes over the top with it. Activated coconut charcoal, you got to use that. And I, I think that's a good source. If you want to get some good activated charcoal, you can get it from coconuts. That's a great idea. I like that. I appreciate that. But he says, the porous surface has, of the porous surface of activated charcoal has a negative electric charge. Dave, you're wrong. That attracts positively charged unwanted toxins and gas. So in other words, you have these positively charged toxins, which includes mercury, lead, heavy metals. That's why they like to talk about that. And activated charcoal somehow grabs onto those. It's wrong. Here I have a pair of camouflage pants and you can see they're well worn because if you know me, you know that I like hunting and I hunt a lot, bow hunting especially. And you can see the inside lining here of my pants are, is a special layer and it's activated charcoal. It's actually got activated charcoal in it. And this actually works and let me explain why. Because, because our bodies are constantly secreting these pheromones and these estrogen-like chemicals, these hormone-like chemicals. Again, they float on water, they're kind of oily and they also float through the air. That's what animals like dogs are smelling and you know, deer are smelling when you're out hunting. They're smelling these oily chemicals that our skin is secreting. And you know, they stick to trees, you, you grab onto a tree. Animals can smell that. They smell that oily stuff that you leave behind. It floats through the air, it sticks on substances. So if you have a lining of activated charcoal in your clothing, it's awesome, it works. It actually grabs onto those oily substances and they adsorb to it because that's the property of charcoal. The problem is eventually it gets full, all, those, all that surface area of the charcoal fills up with your scent molecules and you have to heat it in a high setting in a dryer for like an hour and that speeds up the molecular motion and literally pulls off those, the, your scent molecules, your human scent, and it recharges the charcoal and it's ready to go again. So you can use it if you're eating some kind of a moldy toxic food or if you've ate something that you, that you think is probably toxic. You know, you, like you have food poisoning, take some activated charcoal and it works for hunting, but probably don't scrub it on your teeth and just beware of all the false claims regarding activated charcoal. <laughs>